Yes, so good evening everyone. I'm uh, Roy Barkan, I'm uh, from Israel. I'm uh, very happy to uh, be talking to you today. I've been to this uh, uh, group uh, several times in the past and I love to uh, participate and ask questions. And uh, I also uh, would be very happy if uh, you participate and ask questions. Um, this is a topic that uh, I've been thinking about a lot and I have some ideas about, but I'm sure that uh, uh, you can also have uh, ideas to teach me on. So um, that's, uh, that's my plan for today. Um, as uh, other people have said before me, uh, I'm not an expert. I'm just uh, a dude. Uh, I'm sure that uh, you, there are things that you can teach me and I'd be happy to, to learn as well. Um, so uh, today, basically, my main topic is about uh, uh, passing arguments into functions, okay? Uh, in uh, C++, there are many ways to pass arguments to functions, and uh, this is such a, an, a tricky and uh, important topic that uh, it also appears in the C++ core guidelines that uh, Herb Sutter and uh, John Strasrup uh, initiated a few years ago. And the uh, uh, rule uh, core guideline, uh, rule F16, uh, talks about uh, how to pass arguments uh, into functions. Uh, where basically they say that if uh, the argument is an imparameter, which is quite uh, common, um, we should pass uh, cheaply copied types by value and others by a reference to const. Okay, so um, uh, that's, uh, that's the rule. They also give a reason um, that both of these uh, uh, ways to pass arguments uh, indicate to the caller that uh, there will not be any modification of the argument. And uh, both of them can be initialized by R values, which is very cool. Um, the only thing is that uh, there isn't uh, uh, any discussion so far about uh, exactly uh, what is uh, cheaply copied types and, uh, and why is it important to make this distinction and what happens if I uh, make a mistake and go with one and not the other. So uh, uh, they do say that uh, it uh, depends on the machine architecture. Um, two or three words that are usually best passed by value. Um, and uh, they basically say that uh, the simplicity and safety uh, are the are reasons why uh, passing by value uh, is something that is uh, recommended for small types. Uh, and that it can be uh, faster than passing by reference um, because there's no extra indirection uh, from the function. So this is all good and nice. And then in this talk, I'll try to uh, uh, dive a little deeper into uh, what uh, passing by uh, by value uh, means, passing by reference. How can thing, how can this be done, and how we can uh, um, design both our libraries and use libraries that have uh, made choices around uh, this uh, uh, this distinction. Okay, I also want to say that uh, uh, this topic is uh, uh, close to the heart of Herb Sutter, the I think chairman of. Uh, the C++ uh, uh, ISO committee. He's talked a lot about it. This is uh, one of his recent talks from February 2020. And uh, basically, you can see that uh, there are many uh, different types of uh, passing uh, arguments into functions. And uh, the first line, which I think is the most common and thus uh, many, many times most important, is the one for in arguments. And again, again, he mentions a, a cheap to copy and uh, the distinction between a, a const uh, reference and uh, passing by a value. Um, so that's, uh, uh, that's what he had to say. And uh, let's uh, look at some code, look at some examples. And uh, here, here I can I show you, uh, here you can see two examples. Um, these two functions at the top, uh, scale down and move points, they both uh, accept a, a vector uh, of doubles, or one of them accepts a, a vector of doubles and a double, and it just uh, goes and uh, divides each item uh, uh, by the double. Uh, a. We can see here that uh, the vector itself is actually an in-out uh, argument. It goes in and needs to go out, so it is passed by reference. And uh, the coefficient a is passed uh, by value. It's small, that's what the guideline tells us. Similarly, if we have uh, a point object that uh, maybe contains uh, uh, two or three or maybe four uh, doubles, depending on how many dim dimensions you are, it uh, will uh, pass uh, the vector by reference and the point uh, by value, and we can just uh, move all of the points uh, by using maybe a plus operator to move all of them by origin. As uh, the object uh, that we want to work with grows uh, larger and larger, uh, we might want to switch to using a const reference. Okay, so like a reorient uh, uh, function that accepts maybe a vector of rotation matrices 
and a rotation matrix. Maybe a rotation matrix is something like a three by three or four by four matrix. It's larger. So if you want to go over all the items and uh, multiply them, multiply all the matrices one by one, um, it might more, make more sense to pass uh, this uh, coefficient uh, as a const reference and not copy it. It's not uh, cheaply copied, copyable. And similarly, if we're using uh, strings, for example, so you know, for for std string, I want to add a suffix again with a plus equals uh, operator to many many uh, uh, vectors. We will use a, a const reference because uh, a string can be considered uh, something that isn't uh, cheaply uh, copied. Although one might uh, argue that uh, sometimes a string, uh, if, if it's small, can it is cheaply copied. But again, if I write a single a simple function. I, it's hard for me to tell how cheap it is to pass a string or not. So here we see uh, four uh, functions that are very, very similar. Okay, They basically all accept one vector and one item, and they apply uh, an, an operation to the vector, to each element uh, of the vector in the item. You see that in some cases, things are cheaply copied or copyable, and we pass them by value. In other cases, it's not so cheap, so we pass by Cohen's reference. And uh, this is all uh, nice and good, but uh, as you can see, it's um, sometimes a matter of taste. Where do you draw the line? Where is the correct place to switch from a pass by value to pass by cross reference? And uh, the fact that I chose these four functions to be so very similar uh, also uh, you know, leads us to yet another bigger problem of uh, what do we do about uh, uh, templates? Okay, If I have a, a single function, uh, like an apply function that just accepts a container, a value and an operation and, uh, and performs this, this uh, uh, the operation on, on each item of the vector uh, and the given value v, it's uh, more tricky to consider wh what do we want to do. Do we want to pass things uh, by value or pass things by cross reference? And uh, happily, C uh, gives us some tools uh, to work with this, and uh, we'll talk about it a little more uh, in the following slides. So, this is sort of like uh, my introduction. Uh, does anyone have any questions so far? Okay, so let's uh, uh, move uh, uh, move on. I've got a question. Sorry. Yeah, of course. Uh, in your example, you uh, have this example with the the second one. So actually, uh, I think it was the slide before. Um, sorry. Yeah. Um, you said that it takes extra time to to access. Uh, the object if it's uh, given by const reference. So, and then you were arguing, but um, in this example, the last one of this slide, uh, sorry, is the matrix. Um, the second um, argument was also a matrix, which is multiplied with the, with the first matrix, um, which means mm -hmm. if the first matrix uh, is very large, then it also means that uh, because it's iterated through, that also the second parameter needs to be accessed multiple times. So wouldn't that be an argument for not passing this as const? Well, passing uh, the argument as, as const or not const basically has to do with whether we want to uh, to change the argument, whether it's an in parameter or in out parameter. Okay, so in this uh, example with the rotation matrix, uh, the vector v, we're going to go through it and change each and every uh, element, whereas the uh, multiplier uh, coefficient uh, t, we're just yeah. going to accept it as an input and not change it. So that's why we went, went for const. But, uh, yeah, I, I got that one. Yeah, yeah. That's why you made it const, because it's not modified in the outside, which is fairly yeah. true, but I, my... Um, I was asking because of the performance you said from the uh, from the from your initial statement that the performance is much higher when it's accessed uh, through when passing passed in as a, as a reference. So maybe the the second parameter could be cop copied could be an uh, performance boost. Maybe I don't know. Yes, yes. So, so basically, I think I understand what you're saying. Uh, and definitely, in some sense, you you are correct. There are cases where uh, uh, you know passing the argument itself. Uh, you know, if if I pass by value, I need to perform a copy construction usually. And if I uh, pass by reference, then all I do is uh, just uh, pass a pointer, which is uh, easy. But on the other hand, 
uh, when I go and access uh, uh, the member, uh, my accessing through a pointer can be a little slow, and there can be also other issues uh, which uh, hurt, uh, which can hurt performance. I will actually show a small example uh, that uh, discusses this a little bit uh, later on. Um, but to to the point, um, I chose the, the you know the VS line and the, and the cutoff point in these examples here. But in, and definitely, um, this is a point of taste. Yeah. So there might be yeah. cases where I should have uh, I should do this by value or the other or, or a string by value. It's it's really a matter of taste. It's uh, there, there are no clear cut rules, and that's yeah. I think one. Of the Thank you. Thank you. Also, yeah, my point was basically that. Um, um, uh, the copy of the second parameter is a one-time investment, but um, the multiplier uh, makes the excess of it, um, yeah, scaling up, right? That's what I mean. Yeah, I, I think it also boils down to his earlier slide where he mentions that co copy is performant or is good only if uh, the size of the object that you're passing in is a multiple of couple of word sizes. So, uh, but if that's not true, obviously you'll not gain on performance and copying will itself take a lot, a lot of time. In that case, passing this object also in terms of reference will make more sense. So it again boils down to the, the fact that we need to make sure that uh, we measure performance in both the cases and that will be a better way which will guide us how we should go and implement but that was just as a guideline ultimate truth is the way we run it on the machine and whatever works in terms of performance that we should go ahead and choose yes that is correct in in this example here what i was thinking about is a rotation matrix which is something like a, maybe a three by three or four by four matrix so it has like between 10 and 20 doubles yeah, and 10 and 20 is a Typically larger than uh, you know three or four registers, it, but uh, in some senses it might be uh, kept in registers if you want to. Usually it's stored in memory, and if it's stored in memory, then uh, you know performance should probably be similar regardless of whether the memory is a local variable in the stack or just a reference to uh, to a variable that is somewhere else in the stack or in the heap. But definitely measurement is important, and as I mentioned, I'll have a you know an, an example later on. Okay. Great. So let's uh, uh, let's move on. Um, so uh, uh, you know, we're, we're tr I'm trying to think of uh, how do I write a, a template function uh, that can accept any type of argument. It has an in argument, and I want to decide: do I want to use uh, 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 by value or by const reference or something else? So let's uh, before trying to decide ourselves, let's see what uh, uh, other people do. Let's see what the STL does. Okay. So most uh, STL algorithms um, uh, that are you know, templated on types and have to get them as arguments, most of them will actually uh, choose a, a pass by const reference. Okay, the main uh, I think uh, motivation around that or logic around that is that uh, STL uh, says that uh, you no know, pass by value it can be cheap uh, for some types, uh, but pass by reference is always cheap. Okay. Uh, and as you mentioned, there might be some performance implications, but uh, pass by reference is re basically uh, always cheap. There, there are no hidden costs around the uh, uh, copying. And for that reason, uh, uh, the vast majority of uh, STL algorithms that uh, accept a, you know, a generic uh, type T argument of an input, they use a uh, const reference. Okay, so, and here are two examples. Here's the uh, plus uh, uh, function object from the STL that uh, accepts, uh, has, you know, a, call operator that accepts two arguments of type T and just uh, uh, adds them. And although we know that mo many, many cases where we do a plus, it's on just an integer or a double or something that's very simple and, 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 uh, and, and not tricky, still the, uh, uh, the STL implementation uses const reference here. They go for the uh, worst case. They assume that T can be uh, potentially large and uh, hard to copy. And similarly, they remove uh, uh, algorithm, I assume uh, some of you know it, it uh, accepts, uh, you know, two iterators uh, and uh, a value that goes and uh, uh, basically moves uh, uh, every occurrence, uh, uh, well, it, 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 it changes the, the, the sequence such that any occurrence of uh, uh, 
of the value doesn't appear in it. It uh, moves uh, things from the end to overlap where the value was. And again, here, uh, they choose a, a const uh, t reference and not uh, passing by value because, again, they are not sure whether t is cheap to copy or not copy. So they go on the safe side and they just pass by reference. Okay, and that's really uh, the common case in most of the STL. Still, there are some cases where they uh, know that a copy is needed anyway, so they uh, pass by value. Okay, so here's the accumulate uh, algorithm from STL. It also accepts uh, two, uh, uh, two iterators and another input uh, argument, which is the an initial value for the accumulation. And the, in the accumulate case, this uh, value will later on become the result of, of accumulate. Okay, so they know that a at least one copy is needed anyway. So uh, they chose to just accept uh, the init argument by value. Okay, and here a copy can be made. And uh, later on during the uh, you know execution of the algorithm, this uh, value will just be used to store the uh, running uh, sum or the running uh, accumulation, and that will be what will be the later uh, return. So if a copy is needed anyway, then STL will just uh, use a pass by value you know, uh, spend the cost of the copy in here and not uh, anywhere else. So this is what uh, the STL does. Um, and there are uh, some cases where uh, um, copies are used not, not just because they are needed, but because of safety and because of reasons of uh, potential uh, problems, like in uh, the std bind function. Okay, so std bind basically takes a function object and uh, and some uh, uh, other arguments, and it converts them into, you know, a single uh, entity, uh, of a single function object that has fewer arguments. Okay, and in, in this case, there can be lifetime issues. Okay, what happens if uh, the, the result of bind uh, outlives or uh, gets destroyed only after the, this A object uh, will get destroyed? That can be, uh, you know, a cause for a dangling uh, pointer or dangling reference. So for that reason, the uh, std bind function that creates a, a binding it uses a pass by value just in order to make sure that lifetimes is, is a, a safely kept okay so these are some examples we can basically see that uh, yeah, some algorithms go one way others go the other way uh, but i would tell you that uh, you know the, the common case is const reference when uh, type t is unknown that's uh, stl currently okay and uh before you know, trying to choose uh, which is best or trying to find some maybe sweet spot among the different uh, options, I think uh, there's time to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the elephant in the room uh, that uh, uh, is, is you know sometimes uh, you know not not considered when talking about passing by value versus passing by reference. I don't know if uh, uh, some of you perhaps have already thought about it and, and have it in their mind. That elephant is called the aliasing. Okay, so uh, what's aliasing? Aliasing uh, is a term that has to do with the, you know, different uh, uh, pointers or different objects that actually, um, uh, you know, relate or point to the same uh, place in memory. Okay, and uh, let's uh, as a, an example for what the aliasing is. Let's look uh, at this uh, scale down function that I've shown you before. With a very, uh, I know, unique or strange uh, use case where you know, I accept uh, the vector uh, uh, v and the coefficient uh, a. I do it uh, in this example by const reference. And then I will call scale down. And as my second argument, I pass in uh, an, an element from inside the vector. OK, so what's going on here? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if it's uh, uh, how clear it is. But the, the fact is that in this case, um, although uh, a itself is a reference to const, it, it also is a reference into the vector, which we uh, the, the algorithm accepts as non-const. Okay, so uh, the reference is const, and I cannot change objects through A, but uh, during the execution of the scaled-down algorithm, uh, the vector will, in fact, change. And as the vector changes, um, uh, A will also uh, change. Okay, so what will uh, running scale-down on a vector uh, and, uh, and uh, my vector, uh, uh, at position zero would do. So the, the sad fact is that uh, we'll go into the uh, for loop, uh, we'll divide uh, the first element, the first item in the vector by itself and probably um, convert it into one, okay? 
and and the fact that the first element convert got converted into you know 1.0 basically changed not only the item in the vector but also a because a is just a reference from that point on i just go and continue with the for loop to each and every other element and it will just divide it by one okay so instead of maybe scaling down everything such that the uh, the first uh, object uh, the first member is one and the rest are scaled down uh, uh, you know um accordingly this just changes the first element in the vector and doesn't affect any of the rest okay and uh, if you like i think we have a little bit of time we can uh, see it in, in action yeah so uh you can see i have a vector of uh, three uh, integers or three doubles uh, two two and two and i will uh, call it scale down and we can see that uh instead of scaling it down to uh, one, 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 it's uh, scaled down to one and two and two. Okay, so it's kind of sad. And uh, it's, I, I think that it would be very hard in a code review or something to look at uh, this uh, scale down function and, uh, and consider the fact that uh, there might be cases where this const is not really a const and it can change during the execution. Okay, so this is uh, uh, tricky. So, and, uh, uh, yeah. Hi, Roy. Uh, sorry for interruption. I, yeah, I got the point that this const is not behaving like a const, but I did not understood why. What is the reason behind that? If you can please repeat it. Yeah, of course. So the thing is that uh, um, this uh, a scale down function it actually uh, receives two arguments. One of them is not const, and the other is const, and they are both uh, uh, references. So in fact, they are pointing to memory, and uh, they are both pointing into the same location, okay? Or they potentially can point to the same location. And if they are, uh, the only thing that C++ guarantees when I ex uh, use a const reference is that I don't change the object uh, A uh, when I use that uh, uh, um, variable A. But if I uh, happen to have another pointer or another way to change the object through uh, the vector V in this example, it's totally uh, legal and okay, and the uh, desired behavior, or the expected behavior of the compiler is that if I make this change uh, on, on an element of V, it will also propagate into the element of into A. Uh -huh. okay. okay, okay, I get it. Same variable or element is passed one in one as const and other as not not const, and if we change the non-const, the const will also uh, be changing in that sense. Okay, that that's really yes. a nice example. Thank you. Yes, exactly. So, as mentioned, this is tricky. And, uh, you know, when, when humans read this type of code, they rarely consider it, rarely think about it, okay? So, and it means that uh, it, it can lead to very strange and unexpected uh, bugs in your code, okay, or in, in our code. Uh, we, it's hard to think about it. Uh, when we're talking about C++, you also, sometimes we need to think about, the, you know, the, this pointer, okay, our, when we use the member functions, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, our function, uh, we have a member function that also receives as an argument a different uh, object of our, the same type. And we need to consider, hey, is that different object equal, equal to this or not? These are uh, some of the tricky things uh, that we need to think about. And it's not just that uh, we, uh, when we read uh, this code, we always think, uh, we, we always forget about aliasing. And we think that uh, uh, the A argument and the V vector will not point to the same uh, uh, objects. Uh, compilers, on the other hand, they go on the other way around. They can't ignore it. Whenever they see uh, you know, two different references or two different pointers in the same uh, code block um, to the same type of object, some are const and some are not const, they always have to assume that there's a chance that uh, they will uh, look at the same uh, location in memory. And whenever uh, one gets changed, they need to consider, will this, does the other one change as well? And this uh, can uh, hurt their performance, and this uh, has some uh, implication on you know the question that was asked before, and we'll see an example right in the next slide. Okay, so this is uh, tricky stuff, and uh, we think that we need to uh, think about. Okay, so let's uh, uh, talk a little bit about the performance uh, of LEC. Okay, so in order to take an extreme example, I took uh, again the similar function to what we talked about so far, but I uh, you know tweaked it a little bit uh, to be even more uh, drastic. So this is the function foo, except it's a vector and a double by const reference. And it goes over each and every item and it uh, multiplies it by uh, 
uh, the hyperbolic sinus of the coefficient. Okay, it doesn't really matter. This is the hyperbolic uh, sinus. It's just that they, I'm doing uh, quite a lot of computation on the coefficient on each and every iterations. Okay, so that's the basic idea. And uh, the thing is that uh, you know because I'm using a const reference, the compiler does not know or cannot assume it or, or that uh, there is no aliasing. Uh, so in each and every uh, iteration. From the compiler's perspective, there's a chance that when I change an item, coefficient itself will also be changed. Okay, and for that reason, uh, performance uh, uh, can can be lost because there are some missed opportunities. Okay, so let's talk about them. And maybe you also you have some ideas about the potential missed opportunities. The first, uh, you know, are more low level, and the rest are, are higher level. So one thing has to do with the registers versus memory. Okay. Um, uh, uh, small uh, arguments, small uh, uh, variables or types such as a double can just sit in a register and, and, and live there, okay? But when we're using a const reference, uh, the compiler uh, needs to understand wh on what times we need to uh, refresh the register and load it again from memory because there's a chance that some other memory operation is, is, is you know, has acted on the same location where my register uh, is mapping and I need to perform many more loads and stores than uh, in case of uh, a pass by value where I can keep the coefficient in a register and know that no one touches it, okay? Um, similarly, there's uh, the point of uh, vectorization. I don't know uh, how many of you are uh, aware of, uh, you know, modern CPU architectures and also GPUs, uh, but in, in fact, uh, uh, a typical uh, uh, CPU today uh, is able to perform in a single assembler instruction multiple uh, multiplications or so several multiplications there are these things called the uh, uh, mmx or sse or avx registers where in a single register i can hold as uh, like uh, four uh, double uh, uh, variables in a single register and uh, perform four double multiplications in a single uh, assembler command okay so the compiler uh, has the ability to this way perform uh, you know four times the uh, as many multiplications in the same number of assembly commands, uh, if it knows that uh, that all these operations can be done together at the same time in parallel, okay? And in case uh, the coefficient is, is, has been passed by value, it can just put four of the four duplicates of this coefficient in such one large AVX register and just perform the multiplication over the vector and just jumping uh, four items at a time. Okay, maybe until uh, it reaches close to the end and just doing uh, the rest, uh, uh, you know, remainder, uh, fewer than four if needed. But because uh, when, when the coefficient is passed by reference, this uh, opportunity is gone. The compiler is not really allowed to do these things for the time uh, unless it goes and checks whether the, the, the coefficient really isn't part of the vector. Okay. And, um, and the last uh, thing that... Uh, you know, is more high level, but can can be you know important in the in the very uh, you know massive in terms of performance is what uh, can be called as expression hoisting, or sometimes it's also called I think uh, as uh, folding, um, and this has to do with uh, this uh, uh, hyperbolic sinus here. Okay, uh, uh, compilers that are smart can know um, that uh, certain functions are what's called the uh, pure functions. Okay, and pure functions. There are functions that uh, do not have any side effects, and if they are called many, many times um, with the same argument, they will generate the same result. Okay, so if uh, the compiler is smart, they can see that uh, a coefficient uh, is constant, a function is pure, is pure, and uh, could perform this uh, uh, hyperbolic sinus just once, and then go and multiply the items one at a time. If the compiler knows that a function is pure, it doesn't have to call it each and every iteration, although my code looks like this. And this is also potentially a, a big uh, performance boost. And again, the compiler will also will only be able to do it if it's smart enough and if it knows that the coefficient will not change as we change uh, the items in the vector. Otherwise, this uh, is a lost opportunity. Okay, so... Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I think I'm missing something here. What exactly is the compiler required to do? Is it required to protect against the effects of aliasing or is it required to assume that aliasing may occur in other words the example you gave us on godbolt is it a 
is is the compiler doing what it's supposed to do in that case the fact that it uh, allowed the entire uh the, the entire array not to be modified except for the first item yes so the compiler is doing uh, what it was meant to do and uh, in the c++ the compiler uh, aliasing is is legal it's 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 something that is a uh, totally uh, valid and the compiler always needs to uh, uh, you know to, to assume that in case of uh, in case of aliasing it needs to uh, propagate uh, the values uh, as they are so it has to uh, um in the in the latest example that i showed the compiler has to uh, only change uh, the first value and, and keep the rest it has to you know propagate uh, the change for the first item in the vector into the coefficient and similarly here the compiler has to uh, 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 abide by aliasing okay it's, it's not allowed uh, for a compiler to ignore it it's not allowed for the compiler to try and uh, optimize away um, if uh, we give it uh, several references to the same objects whether const or not const the compiler should uh, understand that we can change uh, the object uh, through one reference and then access it to the other and it has to uh, work uh, just seamlessly okay uh, in c11 uh, you know to, to contrast it there's the notion of uh, you know multi-threading and the uh, uh, locks and mutexes etc. In those cases, the compiler is allowed to uh, to make assumptions about uh, whether a reference or an object gets changed by a different thread without uh, uh, locking. Okay, and uh, the compiler knows what uh, um, you know release semantics and lock semantics are etc. And it can uh, assume that uh, um, there are no races in your code and that you will not uh, uh, change an object through a different thread. Um, uh, while uh, uh, without using a uh, proper locking uh, mechanic mechanisms or synchronization mechanisms but when it comes to aliasing it's the other way around the compiler um, you know if, if you change the same object in the same thread through different references the compiler has to let you do it and has to uh, act on it uh, just as if uh, they're the same object okay it is a bit weird though because you know it's a const reference and it seems to be behaving as if it was volatile. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so I, I'm wondering if anyone ever pro proposed dropping this uh, requirement from the compiler and bring it back only if you actually uh, declare the, this reference as const volatile. Yeah, OK. So volatile, as you probably know, is a different uh, story. The volatile keyword mostly relates to a uh, um, Activities that are um, done, you know, outside of the uh, CPU or the compiler's uh, uh, knowledge. Okay, yes. Yeah, so, so a volatile uh, uh, object is some is an object that uh, you know it can be changed even without the compiler knowing it. Okay, right? So maybe uh, some hardware device or something else goes and changes a volatile uh, object. In this case, you know, it's it's similar. It's the compiler it knows about everything. It knows about the objects, but, but uh, as you mentioned, it doesn't know about the uh, volatile or not volatile. Um, and I don't really know, I, I, mean, I mean, okay, I can tell you that uh, this behavior as it is uh, currently is a sort of like a backwards compatibility thing uh, with uh, C, with old style C, okay? That's uh, a little bit of, uh, you know, of, you know of, of, of me being uh, a coy uh, saying that because you know, in C there are no references, they're just pointers, okay? So, but but in C, if an object, if a function uh, receives two pointers, uh, it you know the compiler needs to assume that the two pointers can be into overlapping memory, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. In C++, they uh, you know did the same for uh, for for references as well, and uh, yeah, and, and the const uh, uh, keyword only uh, you know guards against what I do with the object through uh, through the specific handle that I have and not through others. So. One might think that it's, uh, it has to do with uh, backwards compatibility. The reason for not changing it, um, I think it may be, uh, uh, you know, obviously tricky to change it uh, now. Um, but on the other hand, there may be reasons to maybe uh, just introduce a new keyword uh, for the for these cases, and I'll have a slide about it later on. So this, by the way, is the performance uh, difference of the example uh, of this extreme example from the previous slide. Okay, you can see, uh, yeah, this is uh, these are results of uh, QuickBench, uh, you know, the Google benchmark uh, uh, online uh, uh, suite. If you like, uh, I can click, I could click the link later on, and uh, and we can run it together. 
but it's just unbelievable, right? Uh, um, I, I think the uh, vector that I had is, was large, but not too large. And we can see that uh, if I do this thing by reference, it's 27 times slower than doing it by value, okay? The, the, the missed opportunities, they can be large, okay? This obviously is an ex extreme example. It's not uh, as easy to do it, uh, um, you know, to, to get this level of, uh, uh, of, of a performance uh, uh, hit when using a reference versus by value, but uh, sometimes it can be very, very uh, hurtful. Um, you know what I think uh, before moving to the next slide, because I know that some of you might be interested, let me uh, copy the link to, uh, uh, to Goldbolt here, uh, maybe even so you can take a look at the, at the code and uh, maybe switch to QuickBench. If you like, I'll put it in the GoToMeeting meeting chat. Um, if you like, okay. Um, as we can see, if in, in extreme cases, uh, passing by value is 30 times faster than passing by reference, which is unbelievable. Um, so this is, uh, you know, I plan to talk about it uh, um, right now, but obviously the questions that you raised, uh, um, you know, already mentioned a lot of it. But, uh, because compilers, uh, you know, have to assume the worst case, but they know that in most cases there is no aliasing. They know that in many, many cases um, there's a lot of performance on the table. There is a lot of work and a lot of, uh, you know, theory and implementation in compilers to try and prove whether aliasing is impossible or not. Okay, they do try to prove whether two uh, references or two pointers or a point in a reference might point to the same location or not. If you look, uh, you know, below the surface, uh, for example, in the intermediate language, in the uh, Clang intermediate language, intermediate representation, or inside GCC, and the, when information passes from the C++ front end into an optimizer's backend, there are specific, uh, uh, you know, um, attributes that uh, can be given to different uh, arguments and different uh, uh, variables, saying that they uh, that there's a chance of, of aliasing or no chance of aliasing because they, it is known that uh, this information is important and whatever I can prove about aliasing. I want to propagate it through the entire compilation chain uh, because uh, it, there, there are many places where performance can hit about it. And uh, you know, similar to the question that was asked before, uh, the C language itself has a keyword that C++ does not have, which is called restrict. Okay, and a restrict keyword can be placed in C in the C language on the pointers usually, and I think most of mostly uh, in cases that where the pointer is uh, an argument to a function. And uh, the rule is that. Uh, if a code block has a restrict pointer or a restrict array, since I think C++23, as far as I understand, um, sorry, I think C23, not C++, um, then that, in that code block, uh, only that restrict pointer array can change the objects that are uh, pointed to uh, through it. Okay, And if uh, you go ahead and uh, change uh, those same objects uh, through another pointer or through another reference, well, and see there are no references, then uh, uh, it, it is undefined behavior. Okay, and that, this allows uh, uh, you know, C programmers to sprinkle the restrict uh, keyword uh, around their code base and get uh, some performance benefits. And uh, C++ doesn't have uh, this keyword. Uh, I tried to read a little bit about uh, uh, you know, suggestions to add uh, this restrict keyword uh, from C into C++ as well. And uh, I understand that it has a, uh, some limitations. The committee isn't too uh, keen about uh, doing it. I'm not really sure why. I think it has to do maybe with the fact that you can see they're not just pointers, there are also references. There's the, uh, all, always need to think about the pointer to this. Maybe uh, the threading model also uh, has to do with it. I'm not really sure, but uh, I think it will be a good uh, um, a, a good step forward to at least give the, the uh, you know programmers some way. Uh, to uh, you know, to tell the compiler, hey, this uh, th these two uh, references they are not uh, uh, aliasing each to each other, or at least uh, telling this specific uh, uh, pointer or this specific reference inside this specific code block, you can treat it as uh, as something that is not uh, aliased. Okay, so that's uh, a little bit about the performance. Uh, I want to uh, and now let's uh, uh, talk a little bit about uh, what can we do. If uh, we're using a library and we think that the library itself uh, chose to use a const reference where we actually want it to run by value or the other way around. Okay, and uh, 
happily, uh, there are ways, and the, us as, a, as library users who just call functions, we have ways to uh, sometimes uh, bypass or do, do our own will with uh, a library that wasn't uh, built that way. So uh, uh, one direction is uh, taking a, a function that uh, accepts or wants to work, work uh, by value and converting it to reference, OK? So luckily, I'm not sure uh, how many of you uh, know it. Uh, it was a very, very cool uh, uh, functionality in C++28. But uh, since uh, uh, we had uh, we received the uh, uh, lambdas in C++11 and other uh, mechanisms, uh, it was some it was uh, to some extent forgotten. But uh, STL has a, a mechanism called reference wrapper, and there's a function called std colon colon ref. std colon colon ref basically takes an object and wraps it with a reference. Okay, so std reference wrapper is an object that is its size is just like a a pointer. Okay, and uh, a reference wrapper is it's templated. It points to any type T, and uh, uh, it it acts as if it's it's a reference. Uh, it, it acts as if it, it's the value uh, that, that it wraps around. Okay, so in this case, you know, bind uh, uh, once uh, it's uh, last argument, it's third argument uh, to be passed by value. And if I I know that my uh, object A is very very uh, expensive to copy. And I don't want to copy it into the bind. And I know for myself that uh, the lifetime is not an issue because the bind will only uh, live uh, as long as the, the object uh, A lives. I can use the uh, std colon colon ref and that and wrap it. And uh, and that way uh, I can uh, you know basically force the library to get the thing uh, by reference uh, instead of uh, doing it uh, by value, which is a nice uh, tool and trick and trick. But uh, bear in mind that it's delicate. Uh, it's not that you, you can very uh, easily uh, just use the STD ref everywhere. It's uh, sometimes it can be tricky. You know, I don't, I don't think uh, you'll, uh, you know, you'll have uh, uh, unexpected behavior. It's just that sometimes you try to use STD ref and code will not compile because of the different delicacies of the specific implementation of reference shuffer. I won't go deep into it, but there are actually some talks from CVPCon about uh, this specific uh, topic. What about the other way around? The other way around, what, what do we do if uh, a function um, wants to accept something by const reference and we want to pass it by value, to pass things by value, okay? So this example that I wrote um, is basically um, uh, has to do with the erase uh, remove idiom. I'm not sure, uh, I, but probably many of you know about the erase remove. And the erase remove uh, is something that many people talk about, the fact that the, the uh, remove algorithm doesn't actually remove anything. It just uh, just moves back and packs everything that uh, needs to be kept at the front of a, of a container or a sequence. And later on, we need to call erase to remove everything, to actually erase uh, whatever is left. And uh, But the erase remove idiom usually is the you know, reference and talked about using the remove if algorithm. But let's uh, look at this case where we want to call a, a std remove. Uh, on a vector and remove the maximum element, the largest element, okay? And here is the correct idiom where you can see, uh, sorry, that uh, I, I need to uh, not just uh, use a max element, I need to basically convert it into a value. Uh, here I use uh, some uh, a decal type uh, uh, trick and something just in order to make sure that uh, the value isn't passed uh, by reference because here too, you can see that max element by definition is inside the the vector. Okay, and let's uh, look into the example a, a little bit. So here we can see my vector v1 has, uh, uh, let's see, five elements. Okay, one of them is the largest. Okay, it's, it's two, and all the rest are ones. Okay, and vector v2 is just uh, the same. Um, and now let's call the erase remove idiom. First, with v1, we'll do the, uh, I guess, uh, naive uh, thing. We'll just call it erase remove with. Uh, Asterisk max element. Okay, so I'll look for the max element, and then once I found it, I want to remove it. And on the v2, I'll do the fixed approach where I, uh, I wrap it in a value. I, I force a copy construction of a new value. And we can see here the results. Okay, uh, v2 uh, after the erase remove has remained with four elements. Okay, so the the second element, the largest one, was removed. We we got uh, we remained with the four uh, uh, ones. Look at v1. v1 is, has only two elements after this operation. Okay, the, the rest were gone. 
unbelievable. Okay, and uh, again, to, to answer your question, this is totally uh, defined behavior. Okay, that's the way that uh, uh, remove is expected to work in C++, although it's very, very not uh, uh, intuitive. Okay, and uh, for that reason, like we have STD ref, STD colon colon ref, I think there might be uh, some uh, value or some uh, um, or something nice about uh, adding maybe a function called std uh, val. Okay, so std val may be something that uh, accepts an object by reference. Okay, and uh, it returns it without the reference. It just creates a copy. Okay, and with that uh, mechanism, I can just uh, call the eraser move with val of the max element, and this just uh, forces a copy. Okay, and if uh, t was a uh, an uh, uh, an R value reference, and then it will be a, a move instead of a copy, etc. But um, this again is, is a way, maybe it can, can be a nice way to uh, let let people wrap uh, references into values. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering just how useful this might be. If if I understand correctly, you are sort of providing a workaround. You have a function that ex that expects a const reference, and you are actually providing it with a const reference to a temporary. Exactly, but the, the 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 function still expects a const reference, and therefore it cannot assume there will be no aliasing yes. unless it, so, it expects a universal reference. But in that case, it's no longer necessarily a const reference. So, what am I missing here? No, yeah. So, if I if I convert the const reference into a reference to a, a const reference to a temporary, as you mentioned, the the, the function itself in terms of implementation. It, it needs to consider aliasing, okay? But uh, there are two things to, uh, uh, that, that can happen. First of all, um, uh, at least in terms of functionality, the functionality, uh, beca because there is no aliasing, okay, the, the functionality is as we expect it, okay? Only the max element gets uh, removed and everything else works the same, okay? So because I give it a reference to a temporary object that is outside of the vector, when it works, uh, it will not uh, when it changes the vector itself. It will not affect uh, the temporary object that it received as, as a second argument. Okay, that's one thing. So in terms of functionality, just making this copy, you know, gives me uh, or fixes my bugs. Okay. In terms of performance, it's as you mentioned, it's more tricky. But sometimes a compiler can, you know, give this hint to the optimizer and tell it, hey, this specific call, especially if a function is inlined or something. Um, is something that is appointed a to a reference, and because it's appointed, or sorry, appointed to a temporary, and because it's appointed to a temporary, then there's no chance of aliasing, and then the compiler can also optimize the runtime. Okay. Let's uh, continue. Um, and uh, uh, think about how do we still write, uh, you know, one generic uh, algorithm that. Uh, um, that does everything that can uh, that can be uh, templated uh, on a type T and knows correctly whether to um, to uh, accept uh, things by value or by const reference based on the uh, the ex exactly what's needed in each uh, use case. Okay, and actually um, Herb Sutter in his uh, last uh, CVP con talk talk uh, you know spends quite a lot of time exactly on this topic. And he tries. He showed a specific uh, example of how, in uh, today's C plus plus and C plus twenty, uh, one needs to write, a, you know, a, a template function that needs to deal with either a, a cheaply copied or, or expensively copied uh, uh, element. Okay, and uh, so we did something uh, really tricky. It's this text is a little small, so I'll show. It, uh, I'll enlarge it in the next slide. And basically. Uh, Herb is also proposing that in the, some newer version of C++, we'll just uh, write a, a single function with in auto t that will do the same thing. I don't know how we we'll, how plan to do with aliasing, but uh, we'll see. So this is what uh, uh, Herb suggested. Herb suggested um, defining a, a const extra boolean called should pass by value v, okay? And he gave some uh, initial uh, suggested implementation. He said, if the object t, t is trivially copyable, and its size is less than eight bytes, it will be issued by pass by value. And then my, my function foo can be implemented uh, uh, twice, okay? Once with a requires clause for should pass by value t equals true, 
the other with should be plus probability equals, equals false. The first day, uh, our, uh, the first day version accepts the by, by value, the second by const reference, and I just copy and paste the implementation uh, in these two places, uh, and, and I get the, the effect that I want. Okay, this obviously uh, is you know a valid approach, but it has a, a very many many downsides. I think uh, first and foremost the fact that we need to copy and paste the implementation. And I, we need to repeat ourselves is is is, uh, is bothersome, and uh, also the specific uh, definition of uh, what is uh, trivially copyable, what should pass by value or not. Uh, you know, this definition uh, can be lacking. At least I should say that uh, uh, he chose to use uh, something like a concept of boolean that can be specialized. So if I have my own type, like an STD uh, a rotation matrix or STD point, etc., and I know that my size of is uh, maybe uh, not smaller than eight, but it's still uh, close enough to eight. I can do do uh, specialization and choose it for my specific types. True pass by value v is, uh, will be uh, true, and that way I can uh, uh, force uh, uh, the different full algorithms to to pass my type by by value, not by const reference. But uh, again, this uh, doesn't uh, do doesn't have anything to do with uh, aliasing, and obviously aliasing is tricky because a specific type can be uh, you know large enough where I want to pass things uh, uh, by reference uh, in, in most cases, but still I want uh, the caller to, uh, in some places, uh, maybe uh, let me know, hey, there's a risk of aliasing, so maybe it's better to just copy, cop make a copy, take things by value, because uh, that way uh, we can gain the, get the correct uh, functionality. Um, so, uh, so for that uh, reason, yeah, I forgot that I wrote, about, wrote it down, but... Uh, you can see it on the slide, um, and uh, um, so I have a, a different uh, approach or a different suggestion that uh, can be, uh, you know, can be done for for a similar thing. Again, I use a context for boolean, but instead of uh, uh, you know two different implementation, I just use the STD conditional. Okay, so STD conditional is a, you know, a meta programming mechanism where I can uh, just put a boolean and and choose between two uh, uh, types, okay? So here I choose between T and the const T reference. And, uh, uh, and the co so copy of ref, it can receive a type and receive a, an extra Boolean for to force a copy, okay? In case of I'm afraid of an aliasing or something like that. And uh, uh, if I have this uh, mechanism, I can write my own apply function and uh, my apply function will you know, work in a container with a value and a bad operation will also uh, accept an extra Boolean argument with a default false, whether to force by value, in case my caller tells me that this is uh, something that uh, where there's a big uh, risk of aliasing, so we need to uh, copy it no matter what. And then I my function will accept uh, the argument by const reference. And uh, similar to uh, what I did before, I just create another variable uh, which will either be a, a temporary copy on the stack or uh, another a reference to the same uh, object. And uh, with, with this, I can uh, uh, go and uh, do my for loop uh, in, in the single implementation. So this is uh, my potential suggestion of uh, uh, doing this, uh, uh, this approach of a templated, uh, templated algorithm uh, where I do not really know whether to pass by value or by reference. I want to give some uh, good default and also let uh, whoever uses the algorithm uh, get some extra power to, to choose. Okay, so this is the, um, you know, my suggestion. You can, uh, I'd love to hear what you think about it. And basically we've come to the uh, end of the talk uh, where I just want to summarize and say that uh, argument passing like uh, Herb Sutter uh, says time and time again is indeed hard. And the uh, C++ concepts can make things uh, look a little, uh, uh, easier, but it's still uh, uh, hard and need to be considered uh, 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 when doing it. And uh, aliasing is something that uh, people uh, don't really think about too much, uh, but uh, they can cause uh, rare bugs and frequent performance losses. So something that might maybe you want to keep in mind and you uh, write your code and when you do code reviews. So uh, uh, thank you uh, everyone. Uh, danke schön. And, uh, uh, I'm very, very happy to take uh, questions, of course.
Okay, I have a question. Um, can you go back to the proposal? Yeah, sure. Um, why are you not using conditional underscore t? Oh, in the, um, the you're, right. you're using it as a type uh, when when using it uh, uh, in a function. Uh, this would save you the the type name thing, I guess. Yeah, I think you are uh, right. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't even know if it's a typo or if uh, uh, or if it's what's needed. Uh, let's see what uh, the compiled code looks like. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I think uh, I'm not sure. Um, I think this. Yeah, yeah, you're saying if I did it with T, I wouldn't need the colon colon type over here, right? And you wouldn't um, uh, have to type type name in front of it. Yeah, um, that's let's give it a go. Right? Yeah, let's try. Uh, see. Um, Yeah, you're right. It's nicer. Thank you. I, I'll update my uh, my slides. Thanks for your tip. And maybe I'll call it uh, copy or FT. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> okay. Uh, any more questions or comments? One more thing. Uh, um, why are you creating a copy of we inside of the function and? Uh, wouldn't it be possible to directly in the apply function use this template, copy or ref, where you, uh, for the argument, like, uh, b underscore ref? Like in line uh, 13? In, in or, line 11? Yeah, so. Uh, you yeah, you so, want to have the value from the compiler, yeah, I know. Yeah, the basically, I, uh, I pass it once by reference, and then this v is sometimes uh, a value or a reference, right? Uh, so in, in case I need to copy, I'll do the copy once and use it inside the for loop. In case I don't need to copy, then this will be just a reference to a reference, and it should all uh, you know, work. Can you share the, the Godbot link and, and chat? So, oh yeah, of course. Uh, as a matter of fact, yeah, I'll share the link, and uh, I will. I think I'll also. Just uh, can I do this? Uh, just also uh, give you permissions to the slides, and I should share the slides as well. Whoa. Um, see, here's the code both link. Yeah, thank you. And uh, let me see if I can also give you permissions. To to the slides. Hold on. Any more questions, comments? Well, thanks for the presentation. And indeed, I realized that this is really a complex thing. Never given so much thought into it. But thanks for giving the perspective of, uh, you know, uh, this, this is also an area where we should give a lot, lot of thought. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, of course. Thank you. Thank you for listening and thank you for the kind words. And uh, as mentioned, I'm, I'm really happy for feedback. And um, I'm, thank you, Andreas, for uh, you know making my code clearer and my, my suggestion. And uh, if any of you have more uh, suggestions, feel free to email me. I'm really excited about uh, uh, you know learning from, from you guys. Cool. So thanks a lot. I'm very, very happy for, uh, for talking with you. And uh, I'll see you uh, next month, hopefully.